In this course, we will talk about web scrapping and how to transform unstructured data such as web page into a structured data format, for example, CSV and JSON. How to understand HTML structure and extract useful information from a raw HTML page. Our goal is to automate the process of gathering unstructured data in the form of web page and transforming it into a structured data. One might say you could use APIs. Well, some websites provide APIs to extract information from their sites, which is good. If API is available, you should always use that. But what to do if a website does not have an API? This is where a web scrapper comes to play to extract information from such websites. In this video, I will be discussing about web scrapping, applications of web scrapping, limitations of web scrapping. So what is web scrapping? In simple words, web scrapping means data gathering from the internet. Any information gathered from any website will be called web scrapping. Even copy pasting song lyrics is a form of web scrapping. Let's take an example. Consider you want to create a song dataset which contains song name, artist name and lyrics of that song. One way to do it is copy pasting one song at a time. Well, you can try, but just think how much time and energy will it consume. This is where the web scrapping bot comes to play. This can easily automate the process and significantly reduce the time for collecting data. Let's talk about applications of web scrapping. In the world of e-commerce, the competition between businesses is at next level. To keep up with the competition, you need to have the right skills and tools. One of these skills is web scrapping. Through web scrapping, one can easily keep track of their competitors' products, their pricing patterns, product description, and also consumer sentiments towards that product. Such kind of information could be crucial for a business. Well, let's switch to the next sector, the hottest, volatile, high volume sector, that is finance sector. In this era of internet, news travels by just the click of the button. And in this sector, we all know how important a news is. Keeping track of the headlines from multiple sources like websites, tweets, news, and at the same time making quick financial decisions could be a really high pressure job. Well, don't worry, a web scrapping bot could ease your job for some extent. Like you can automate the job of looking through different websites, tweets, news, and bringing all this data instantaneously at a single location. So you don't have to go back and forth through sites. Now let's talk about data science. As we all know, data science is a data savvy domain and web scrapping is a holy grail for data science. In simple words, to achieve great things in data science, you need great data. Many professionals have changed their thinking from algocentric data science to data centric data science. It means that having good quality and quantity data has shown much better results than having a state of the art algorithm. And another use of scrapping is to help streamline real time analysis simply means that data is analyzed right after the data becomes available. If there are so many advantages, there could be few disadvantages or limitations like some websites allow web scrapping and some don't. Website like nsindia.com, this site does not like its data to be scrapped. Every website has its own structure. The web scrapping bot is based on this structure. Website developers frequently change the structure of the website. This could be due to a number of reasons such as change in UI, migrating to a different database, or even for the sake of anti-scrapping. So frequent maintenance of your bot is necessary. There may be legal clauses involved. Every website has their own terms and conditions, which you need to go through before scrapping their data. So you don't get into any trouble. Here are few points to keep in mind. You should not scrap private information from site, which clearly mention that any kind of scrapping is not allowed. Example, LinkedIn and Facebook clearly states that we don't welcome scrappers here. In this course, you will scrape data from well-known Indian finance and business news website, moneycontrol.com. Disclaimer, we are using moneycontrol.com as an example only to teach web scrapping concepts. Before scrapping any website, please read their terms and conditions. Money Control provides livestock data with other useful information of companies like top news, latest news, most read news, market action, global market status, 
most active stocks, top gainers, top losers, and many more useful information. You will be learning how to extract information from news blog from this website. To do that, let's search for a company, let's say Reliance Industries, and scroll down to the news section. We are interested in the news option. Click the See More button. It will redirect you into a new web page. We will be scraping the contents from all these blogs. Let's open this blog. We will be storing the title, description, published date time, URL of the blog, content of the blog. and tags which are present over here. We will also automate the process of storing data from multiple blocks from a given date range. For example, if I want to extract data for last two years for a given a company, then our bot should be able to do that or even extract data of multiple companies for a given date range. Let's try to scrape this web page. To perform scraping in Python, you will need two packages. First is request and second is beautiful soup. Beautiful soup is a really awesome library for web scrapping with a perfectly laid out documentation. I would highly recommend you to go through this documentation at least once. The only drawback of beautiful soup is that it cannot make any request to the web page. And for this purpose, we use request library. I will be using Google Colab notebook to perform all this task. You can use any IDE which you prefer. So first we will install both the packages and this can be done through a simple pip command. pip install request and pip install beautiful soup. And now we will import these packages. Import request and import beautiful soup. Now create a request type object variable and call it request equals request.get. And this get function takes URL of the web page as a parameter. In our case, it would be the link of money control site. Let's paste this link. So basically this variable will hold the content of this web page. If you print the type of this variable, it will show that it's a request type object variable. And to see the content of this variable, just simply print request.text. It's interesting to see that this variable is holding an entire web page. But it's in a simple text format. We cannot parse through this raw text as it is. And for this purpose, we will be using beautiful soup. So the first thing to do is create a beautiful soup type object variable. And let's call it soup equals BS4, which stands for beautiful soup dot beautiful soup. This function takes two parameters. First is text, which we got from our request variable. And the second is type of parser. Since beautiful soup provides multiple type of parsers like HTML parser, XML, LXML, we will be using HTML parser. If you print the type of this variable, it will show you that it's a beautiful soup type variable. Now we can try to parse this web page. Let's start with the simple commands like let's get the title of the web page. So simply print soup.title and it will fetch the title from the web page. Since we are using HTML parser on the text, the beautiful soup understands that this text is to be passed as a HTML document. So in all HTML documents, we have tags, classes, IDs and so on. Let's try to select a paragraph from this web page. We will do a simple soup.select and pass the name of the tag. So P stands for paragraph. This will return a list of paragraph tags and you could use regular expression to clean this text. Or let's say you want only first paragraph, then the function to call will be select one. So it would be soup.select one and will pass the tag as a parameter. So P. You could play around with this library by referring to the documentation. Let's go back and analyze this web page. We want to scrape all the titles of the blog. It looks like this title is an URL. So this could be enclosed inside an anchor tag. To verify this, we will open view page source 
and this can be done by just right clicking anywhere on the web page and selecting view page source. So basically what we are seeing here is the entire code of this web page. Now copy this title and do a quick find on this view page source. What do we see here? The title is an attribute of this anchor tag. So we were right. And this anchor tag has a class which is Arial 11 underscore sum. So we can use this class to extract this title. Search for all the anchor tags which has class Arial 11 underscore sum. This can be done by soup dot find all. This is a function of beautiful soup. It takes two parameters. First is the name of the tag. In our case, it would be anchor, which is a for anchor tag. And second is the attribute. Here the attribute will be class with value Arial 11 underscore sum. The second parameter is a dictionary type parameter. So the key will be class and the value will be Arial 11 underscore sum. If you print the variable, it will return a list of anchor tags, which has class Arial 11 underscore sum. Now let's try to extract all the titles and URL from this anchor tag. We will simply loop through this list and print all the title and URL. Good, we successfully extracted the title and URL from this web page. We could follow exact same steps to fetch the date time and description of this blog. Now we will extract information from a news block and start analyzing this block. We need useful information like headline, short description which is right below the headline, published date time, content of the block, URL and the tags which are assigned to this block. On this kind of data, you can perform sentiment analysis, multi-label classification and even summarization projects. For sentiment analysis, you will need to manually identify the sentiment of the document as positive, negative or neutral sentiment. For multi-label classification project, you can use the tags directly as the output. And summarization is a little bit tricky. You will need to use the content of the blog as the input and headline plus description as the output. Let's get started by opening the view page source for this web page and do a quick search for the headline. The headline is enclosed inside this title tag. Another appearance of a headline, it's a value of attribute, content, that is assigned to a meta tag. And another appearance of headline is enclosed inside the script tag, which is in a JSON format. So here the key is the name and the value is the headline. This script tag also holds the value of the description which we want to fetch as well as the URL. Another appearance of headline is also enclosed in a similar script tag. But this script tag also holds information of article body, published date with other information like headline description. All this information is inside a single script tag that has a attribute type with its value as application slash ld plus json. It looks like information stored in the script tag is in a json format, which is good. We can treat this as a key value pair to extract the information. Only thing remaining is the tags that are assigned to the blog. To find them, let's do a search on keyword tags and here it is. Keyword is enclosed inside a span tag, but we are interested in the value of the tags. Values are enclosed inside an anchor tag. 
and both the anchor and span tags are enclosed inside a div tag which has a attribute as a class and its value is tags underscore first underscore line. We will use this class to extract the tags. Now open Colab notebook to start scraping. First import all the necessary packages that is BS4 request regular expression for cleaning the text and we will also need JSON package since the content inside the script tag is in JSON format. Now copy the link of the block and we will store that inside a variable. Next is to make request to the web page. This can be done by request.get function. And next is to convert this raw text into a beautiful soup type variable. We will use HTML parser. Next thing to do is find all script tag which has type application slash ld plus json. This can be done by soup dot find all function. The first parameter will be the name of the tag and the second parameter will be the attribute. This will find all the script tags which has this type. By printing the length of this variable, we can identify how many times this type occurs. It looks like this type occurs 4 times. Now we will search for this type inside our view page source. Ok, we are interested in the third occurrence of this script tag since this holds all the information that we need. All scripts is a list type variable. So the third occurrence means the second index. Now if we print the third occurrence, it should show the script tag which we want. And here it is. This is the exact script tag which we saw in view page source. We will treat this as a dictionary or JSON. To do that, first we will need to clean this text. By this I mean removing the script tag and the square brackets. So first I will remove slash r and slash n. Slash n is for new line and slash r for raw string. Now our data looks like this. The next step is to remove all the blank spaces. Next I will split this raw string into a list. We can do a split on the square brackets, curly braces, commas as well as colon. And to do this I will be using a regular expression. So re.split, the first parameter will be the format in which we want to split the text and the second parameter will be the string. Now print this variable. Good, we successfully converted the string into a list. Now remove the blank space. This looks much cleaner. Now convert this list to a string format. Next we will remove this square bracket which is in the beginning of the string and at the end of the string. This can be easily done by slicing the string. And finally we got a string which looks like a dictionary. Now simply convert this string into a dictionary. This can be easily done by json.load function and pass the string to this function. And now we got the dictionary with all the information that we need. Only thing remaining is the block tags. To extract the tag, I will find all the div tags which has attribute as a class and the value of this attribute will be tags underscore first underscore line. Good, this class only occurs once. 
so the first element of this list is what we want we are interested only in the anchor tags rather the information between these anchor tags to extract the information between the tags we will use dot get underscore text function this will extract the information which is present between the tags and we will loop through these tags one by one and append these tags inside a list we successfully extracted the labels some minor cleaning is required like removing this tags and slash n this can be easily done by dot replace function we will replace the tags with a blank string and we will also replace the slash n with blank string we can directly use the string as it is but i want the labels in a comma separated format first i will split by hash this will give me a list of strings and then remove the empty element from this list and now i have only the value of the tags next is to convert this list into a string and join them by a comma and last step is to append this string into our dictionary this can be done like this name of the dictionary square brackets key equals to value we can simply save this json as it is by json dot dump function in last two videos we successfully scraped the url and contents of a news blog in this video we will generate the url by this i mean if you visit our initial url which is this and select a specific year let's say 2017 then the url changes to this new parameters have been added in this url let's copy this url into a notepad parameters like seid duration type year so the value of seid is r which could stand for reliance industries duration type is y since we selected a year and the value of year is 2017 which we selected if we scroll down you can see a pagination bar over here with page numbers from 1 to 10 and the next button let's try to select a page after selecting the page it looks like new parameters have been added in this url let's copy this url and paste it in our notepad so new parameter like scat page number next and new style four parameters have been added in this new url the value of page number is 6 since we selected the sixth page number and the value of next is 0 scat value is unknown new style value is unknown Let's see what happens when we select the next button. It looks like in URL the value of page number parameter and next have been changed. And if we scroll down in pagination a new button is added that is a previous button and the page numbers have been updated from 11 to 20. Let's paste the new URL in our notepad. Value of page number is changed from 6 to 11. and the value of next is changed since we selected the next button so if we select the next button once again then the value of next should be at 2 and the page number should be 21 so good i stand corrected so when we click the next button we introduce new page numbers so for value of next equal to 0 the page numbers will be like from 1 to 10 for value of next equals 1 the page number will range from 11 to 20 and for value of next as 2 the page number will range from 21 to 30 so here we have only 21st page number so in this video our goal is to scrape all the urls from every page for a given year so in this case for reliance industries on year 2017 there are total of 21 page numbers and we should have all the urls from these 21 page numbers so we can scrape all the blocks and store that in our database so in this video we will just 
save the URLs. Now let's open view page source for this web page and we will search for this next and two arrows. Okay, so this occurs 19 times. This should be the last one since the pagination is at the bottom of the page. So as you can see, all the page numbers are enclosed inside an anchor tag. All these anchor tags are enclosed inside a div tag which has three classes that is pages MR10 MT15. So we will use this class to select all these anchor tags and these classes occurs only once. So what we want is maximum value of page number and next parameter. For 2017 maximum value of page number is 21 and the value of next is 2. So we can loop through that later and store all the URLs. And to do that we will use this class which holds all the anchor tags with the value of page number. Let's get started with the code starting by importing all the necessary libraries that is pandas, ds4, csv, requests, json, regular expression and os. To perform this I will write a function which will return the maximum page number and the maximum value of next. Let's define our function first get underscore page underscore number and the parameters will be url source id to specify the company page number to initialize the page number so the value of this would be 1 next to initialize this value the value will be 0 and next is year now we will make request to the web page by request library request dot get and pass the url as the parameter next is to convert the request type object variable into beautiful soup type object variable and to do that we will use beautiful soup the first parameter would be the text of the html which we got from our request variable and the second parameter would be the parser we will be using html parser first thing to do is get that div tag which has class as pages mr10 and mt15 and this can be done by a soup.findall function all underscore page underscore number equals soup dot find all and the parameter for this function would be div which is a tag and the value of the attributes so in this case it would be class and value of that class which was this now next is to find all the anchor tags inside this div tag so this div tag has multiple anchor tags so we need to find this anchor tag and this can be done by page underscore list we we'll store all the page numbers in this list above variable which is all page underscore number we want the first occurrence dot find all anchor tag and this will return the text between the anchor tag now this list will hold numeric data like from 1 to 10 and as well as text which is next we will check if the last element of this list is a digit or an alphabet if it's a digit then we can say it's the last or the maximum value in that pagination for that year and if it's next then more pages are there in this list so like if we are looking through this it would show that the last element is next so i need to go one more page forward by clicking this next Okay, so the last element is digit and it will store this digit. So to do that, we can do a any. This will basically map the last element and check whether it's a digit or an alphabet. So the last element from this variable. If the last element is a digit, then return its value as well as the value of next. And if it's not a digit, then go inside else, increment the value of next, initialize the page number variable with the initial value of the second set and then regenerate the URL. This is what this URL will look like. The first part of the URL will be the source ID. You can simply pass the variable over here. 
same goes for page number we need to convert the page number into string same goes for the next and same goes for year and we'll return the function so basically it's a recursive function this function will call itself until it finds the last element of the pagination is a digit now we'll initialize the value for source id as ri which stands for reliance industries page number and next will be 1 and 0 year 2017 initial url same as above and let's call this function print the value of page number and next maximum page number is 21 maximum value of next is 2 or if we successfully generated the url in this video and got the maximum value of page number as well as next in last three videos we learn how to scrape the url and heading of news blog after this, we scraped the content of a news blog and then we generated URL by using values of page number and next parameter. In this video, we will bring all these functions together to automate the process of scrapping blogs for n number of companies for a given time period in years. Let's start with the code by importing all the necessary libraries which are pandas, beautiful soup, csv, request, json, and regular expression. This get block URL function takes the beautiful soup type object variable as a parameter and returns a list of URLs of blogs. We already saw the working of this function in our fourth video. So basically this function will return every blog URL present on this web page. Moving on to the next function, which is the get block content function. This takes URL as a parameter and returns a dictionary with all the content of a news blog. So the information like headline, content body, date time and so on will be written by this function. We saw the working of this function in our fifth video. Now next is get page number function. This takes URL, source ID, page number, next, year, as parameters and return a list with a value of max page number and max parameter. Let's begin by writing a function called save company data and this function will take parameters like URL, source ID, page number, next, years. URL is to be initialized by this value. Source ID will hold multiple companies ID so it should be a list. Initialize page number by 1, value of next will be 0 and year will also be a list so we can fetch data for multiple years. Our first loop will be the source id. Now create an empty data frame with column as company, date published, author, headline, description, article body, tags, and URL. Now we will loop by years and generate the remaining part of the URL. First concatenate the URL with source ID equals to company name, then value of page number, the value of next and value of years. Now we will pass this URL to get page number function. This will return the value of max page number and value of max next parameter. Increment the value of next by 1. Now we will loop by value of next. Inside this loop, we will loop by all the possible values of page number. So for the value of next equals 0, the page number will range from 1 to 10. The value of next will start from 0. In the second loop, this i will hold the value as 0, then the range will be from 1 to 11. And when the value of next is 1, this formula will range from 11 to 21. Inside the second loop, 
add a condition that if value of j is less than or equal to max page number then execute following steps else break the loop inside our if statement create a empty list as url list again generate the url with new values of next and page number which are stored in variable i and j then make get request to this url and convert the request type object variable to beautiful subtype object variable and use html parser now pass this soup object to get blog url function this will return a list of blog url and we will loop through this urls inside try block make a call to get blog content function and pass the url of the blog as a parameter this will return a dictionary with all the data from the blog let's add a few print statements to check if everything is working properly now convert this dictionary into a list and append this list to our data frame Let's say the get block content function didn't work properly. This could be due to the structure of the block is different than our function and it couldn't find the necessary tags which we are looking for. So to handle such an exception, inside our except block create the same list as above and in place of article dict write error. The company name and URL will be kept as it is. so you can debug them later here the continue keyword is necessary because if we come across such exceptions our code should not stop we can go through this exception when we save our data frame and at last save this data frame and now make call to save company data function and pass source id as ri and set years as 2021 and 2020 Let's check if it's working. Good, our web scraping bot is finally ready.